Hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series. Hope you guys are doing good. In the previous video, I gave you a small update about the game engine to show um, all the features or some features that the game engine has right now. And in today's video, I'm not just going to be talking about the features of this game engine, but I'm also going to be talking about the event system, how I manage to handle event when I drag this scene, for example, how does it work? And the basic concept of this is like my YouTube channel, for example. So you have subscribed to my channel. So every time I upload a video, you get a notification that actually tells you that I have uploaded a video. And so you can know and come and watch the video. And the same thing is actually built in this event system. I have some function or some classes that will subscribe to an event. Let's say for a drag event, for example, drag scene event. So I will have a function my editor camera will subscribe to that event. Every time I drag here, I will post that event and the camera system will receive the information about the dragging, I mean the delta, how long have I dragged and things like that. And he will then change the perspective and the view metrics and stuff like that. That's basically the idea of the event system. But we're gonna be seeing that inside of the code to be more practical. So as you already know this, uh, game engine series is to inspire. I hope to inspire you by uh, doing these videos. If that's the case, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you're also building your game engine, I really want to know what you're doing. You can share your link below in your videos or maybe something I will know. And that's also going to be a good idea. So um, if you're interested in getting the source code of the, of the game engine I'm building, there is a version um, that has everything, the NTD component system, um, uh, the renderer system, the skybox and stuff like that. You can download that on my Patreon page by becoming patron. So you can simply go and check that out. The link is also provided in the description below. So without spending your time too much, let's get started. So as you can see here, I have my event folder. Everything about event is actually built inside of this folder. So it's not like um, I have the code spread around the around the project. I have a folder for events and every time I'm building something, I just make sure I put it here. Now, the first thing I want to show you is my, I would say, abstract event um, class or structure. Doesn't matter how you want to call it and how I define event type. One thing which is really important about event is to know how to identify them. That's why I went out and used numbers to identify my event. And I use the same principle I use in my entity component system. I have this function that would every time create a new uh, event ID. I just use the template, the STL, C++, to create um, the ID. So every time I call this function with a specific type, it's gonna always give me the same value. And that's how I can identify a specific event. And I don't have to manage that by writing text and doing things like that. I just have to pass the type of that event and the ID or, or the identification is gonna be handled inside. And you can see here, I have my abstract event or my base event class. It only has this virtual function here, which is actually necessary to get the ID of the current event. So this is basically how I can create the ID of, it, of an event. So every event will have to implement this function here in order for them to have an identification so that's basically the idea of that and um yeah that's basically the idea here the stuff up here this event context is not used yet the idea was to actually create a context in which i can have event so when i call when when an event occurs i don't have to search in the entire event system i just search for the specific context so that's how you can actually uh, increase the performance of your event system. But I'm not using it right now. I just created that just like that. Just to know that I can I could work on that in the future. And you can see here, I have different type of event. I have mouse event, log event, key event, editor event, app event. I really want this game engine to be event driven. You can see even my logging system is, is event driven. So it's not like I'm just pushing a, te a text out. To be able to log something in the console, I need to post an event and it's going to send that to the dispatcher and he will make sure he posts that. This is actually important because 
I want to be, I want to actually uh, make this work with my UI because as you can see in the UI here, we have a console and this console has to put things out. That's why I need to have an event system to actually share the information between the code and the UI, I mean, and stuff like that. So yeah, I just want to show you one event type. Let's say we go to editor event type. In the editor event type here, you can see we have entity selected event and this is how I implement it. So I have a, you know, default destructor, the constructor takes the entity. So when I select an entity on I'm GUI here, so let me go on the UI here. So when I select an entity, the gizmo simply move to the position of that entity. And that's basically the idea about this event here. Any, anyone that subscribed to this event will be able to get the information about the entity that was selected and use that for any kind of purpose. So that's the idea behind this. So you can see some other event here, move, scene, rotate, zoom. So this is exactly what is going on here. When I scroll, I can zoom my scene. When I rotate, when I, when, and I can also move the scene around. So this is basically those events. I'm not going to be getting too deep and showing you how all these events are operating. That's going to take a long time because there is a lot going on. I'm just going to show you that for this open uh, project event. So this one here will actually uh, be called when we, we're trying to open a project. So this is basically those events, editor event. And as you can see, I have different category, I have key event and app and so go on. Now, the next thing I want to show here is the dispatcher. The dispatcher is like the event manager, so to say. It's the one that get the event that occurs and then dispatch that. Call any function that subscribed to that event. So, and you can see here, it simply has, uh, you know, destructor, constructor. And I have my event callback here. It's a function. So I'm using the std function library, functional library. And you can see it's a function that's going to be defined. It returns void and it takes an event as parameter and you can see I have all my callbacks here because I have this map std map takes the event identification and a vector of all callbacks function for that specific event and you see I have the function subscribe just like you are subscribing right now to my channel if you haven't the same way I can subscribe and um, I can subscribe any callback to this uh, event system and every time I post an event you can see here I will simply go and search that event inside of my callbacks here and call the function basically call all functions that were that subscribe to that event and this cast function here is used to actually uh, convert my event to the specific one I want to use uh, if I'm using for example uh, a drag scene event if you remember this is an abstract class so the, it, there is no information in, in that in that in that class there so I need to be able to convert that to a class that has information. That's why I have this cast here. Now let's see how this actually operate in the game engine. So I'm moving to my UI, I'll go to editor, go to uh, panel and menu toolbar. So if you remember, I have this thing here in the menu toolbar. Uh, if I click here to open, it's gonna open the file dialog and you can see I can pick this file here and open and you see it's gonna show something down here so if I do it again open show my console and I pick this file and move this little bit up so you can see it's gonna add a new line here pick this file and then add it here you see this is actually the event system and you can see my logging system is actually at work here showing these things but let's go in the code and see how this operates now to be able to open a project I need to open a file dialog as you can see as I've done here so don't care about all this up here this is just basic stuff and you can see here if the result of the dialog was okay then I want to go out and post this event so I simply say event dispatcher post open project event and I get the file path the dialog up here get the file the project file path and this one here is going to post an event with that file path and anyone that subscribed to this will be able to listen and you know do whatever he wants with this file path and in my menu toolbar using I'm GUI I simply have here you can see open source open scene which should be open project anyway but you see open project 
Now I want to go into my scene class and show you why I implemented a function and uh, yeah, subscribe it to this event so that he can listen and actually respond. That's the reason why we had this text appearing here. So I go to my scene, C++. So this is where I put everything about my scene, the manager, you know, the component and stuff like that. This is where I handle all of that. I'm going to be talking about that later. But you can see here, I have this function I implemented. So static, it doesn't have to be static. It's because I just want to make sure it's only visible here because my scene is a namespace. It's not a class. So I have a static void open project and you can see const ob3 event event. And here I can cast this to open project event. And you see I have my logging system, which also is going to post an event to show this text somehow. So these are event event and I'm just, you know, chaining them like that. And up here, this is how I register this event. I simply say event dispatcher subscribe open project. And you can see I also have entity selected. I mean, entity selected event. This is also an event that I subscribed here. And this is how I can actually uh, register those functions so that they can be called when the event occurs. So that's why when I basically go and, and try to open the project here, this simply does the job for us and print the text down here, basically. So that's basically how the event system work. Uh, I hope I was able to help while talking about this because it's not easy to kind of explain all of this. So if you guys have learned something from this video, just leave a comment below. And if you have any question, or any concern, you can write me in the comment section below. And uh, keep in mind that if you really want to build your game engine, I have a version that you can download and start from and build everything on top of that. If you are interested in that, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description. And yeah, have a nice day. Ciao.